I came uh, to St Ives from London in 1967 and I, I worked for a couple of potteries, local potteries. Um, and after I'd been in science for about a year and a half, Janet, I'd met Janet Leach and she phoned me up and asked if I wanted to come up here. And of course I did. I, I joined a, what they used to call in those days as a student apprentice. People used to come in, in all uh, with various skills. Some people used to come very skilled, maybe have run their own workshop bef before, but they, they, wa they just wanted to study in a, under Bernard Leach and become inclusive in his views and philosophy and uh, a sort of higher education for trained potters. Um, I was here to, to get a real basic training to, to um, completely understand uh, what was meant by a studio potter. Before I'd, I'd been in sort of semi-industrial potteries uh, where you, you just did uh, one part of the making of a pot. Here you, you saw a pot from the beginning to the end and that was the difference. Well the atmosphere was sort of like a cross between a college and a, um, a real workshop. You know, Well it was a real workshop but there was a slight college atmosphere because there was always people coming and going and, but you were here actually to, to make um, a product which was the standard range of pots and that was your job from nine to well, eight to five. When you when you uh, uh, did your own work, um, you you were sort of absorbing the place. You were absorbing um, all that had gone through before. Bernard, who was you know uh, an international potter by then, world renowned. So you're inspired by what he did. You never achieve it. Also, Bill Marshall was a big inspiration. So uh, there was there was the sort of camaraderie side that you had in the workshop, but there was also a serious learning process going on. What was Bernard Leach like? Well, um, I mean, I think he was always a very nice character, a very nice person, but obviously in earlier days, he, everything was a lot more earnest and he, he ruled with a harder whip, if you like. In, uh, at uh, crib time, tea time, Bernard would come down. His studio was just up here uh, above us in the attic. And uh, he'd sit here. Janet would sit over there and we'd be all sat around here up the stairs and around and we'd just talk on various topics. It was it was the meeting time, this sort of like the it was the the joining spirit of the pottery uh, when we all met up. And sometimes there were arguments, sometimes there were just jokes and sometimes it there were serious discussions on, on big topics. Of course I only knew him as, as a fairly old man and um, he felt he was losing touch with his students, uh, so he organised dinners at his place. So we, we, we used to go out regularly for a meal with him at, in the evening. A quite interesting experience because you, you're, a, you're away from the workshop, so you talked on different topics. I mean, he did talk about pots and things, but um, after a few times down there, you know, it gets a bit repetitive. So I. I used to just nudge him into talking about his past and Japan in, in the early years before the war and, and his days in China. And I used, to, I used to love him when he talked about those things. He, he was like a time machine, you know. And, um, and through those dinners, we, we, did, we, we got a very close relationship. I did, anyway. Yeah. I think he's always been there over my shoulder, um, you know criticising me for things, Johnny, no, don't do that, you know. um, I'll always remember him, he, he, he was a big influence, yeah, uh, it's difficult to, to pinpoint, you know, all the, all the times he is the influence, but it, he runs through my life, really. By training students, and they were international students, they then went out, and they, they were like disciples of Bernard Lynch, you know, they were trained under Bernard, so his philosophy and um, practices went with them. So that's how he got a worldwide name. Um, um, but as, as for the, the place itself, I think it's always um, been known as uh, the, the sort of flagship uh, of um, studio pottery. You just don't get those sites. You can't create them yourself. 
they, they are there. And St Ives is, is, is so lucky to have, well, they've got three sites really. I mean, they've got the Tate Gallery, they've got Barbara Hepworth Studio and um, the Leach Pottery. First time I ever came to St Ives, um, I, I do remember walking up the Senec. I've, I've been here for about three weeks, three or four weeks. I was thinking, this is the most wonderful and perfect time of my life. I was totally, I was really enjoying myself for the first time uh, as an adult. Um, and I think that never left me. Um, and I've left St Ives on a few occasions. I, I, I left to work in France for two years and I, and I left to work in Japan for a year. But I always came back. Um, I, I think after I'd been here, a couple of years, I just saw it as my home and I didn't see any other home.